What's up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Billy Collins. Matt do 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 And this is Magician. And the Jock. That was actually not bad. <laughs> not bad at all. I did pretty good on that. Welcome. We are doing, this is the first time we've done any kind of remote show. And the only reason we're doing it remotely is we had this young stud in last week. Incredible we, human. Yeah, we screwed up the audio. And um, so we... Um, and he had actually driven up from Florida, but this is a local legend, um, Chase Martin. We recorded last time, and I've had, I can't tell you how many people have texted me saying, you know, when is the Chase episode coming out? I had that same situation. I was at the gym, and I walked through the gym and like, hey, I heard, heard you having Chase on. When's Chase coming on? So this guy... This guy has a tremendous reach. So, man, welcome back. I appreciate you being flexible. And Yeah, man. Thank you all for having me. Um, it's a pleasure to see you guys again. You know, I, I keep the 252 with me, Moorhead City with me, no matter where I'm at, Orlando, Florida area right now. So it's a beautiful day here, you know, mid to upper 80s. But definitely <laughs> Moorhead City is the roots. You know, that's where home will always be, no matter where the world takes us. So thank you all for having me. Absolutely. Absolutely. Show, Chase, show them that big old rock that you got on there. Look oh, at yeah, that. baby. Two, two five, two. two. I told him, Chase, he got that. It was, it was regular font at first, but he just keeps getting bigger and bigger. <laughs> and that thing has gotten his bold it's 125 font. right now. It's, but anyways, man, yeah, so obviously I know you really well. To kind of set the stage, Billy, was that the first time you had met Chase? Yes, it was. Okay. First, first time I met him. Big fan already. Yeah, so I Chase was a senior when I was a freshman. He was the starting quarterback. He was dating the hottest chick at school was ripped, you know, just a ball of testosterone walking down the hallways. So I was a little intimidated. I mean, I was 14. Um, so he he's, was obviously an athlete. And then he's got two younger brothers, one of which who still lives locally here, um, Nick, and then Matt. Is Matt down in Florida too? So he's in Raleigh. So he's okay. close to Moorhead, not too far away. Yeah. So we, we grew up in the same neighborhood. There was always something going on at your house. We talked about that last time, which... Um, so I know we'll want to dive into that, but maybe, yeah, let, let people who don't know who you are, the, uh, the three people in Carter County who don't know who you are, maybe kind of set the stage, you played four sports, all that good stuff. My mom and dad really set the stage for us growing up. They're married about 40 years now, Randy and Sheila. And like you said, I'm the oldest of three. Uh, Moorhead City is the roots, man. It's where everything started. It's, uh, you know, through sports. I played four sports in high school. Um, football, baseball, basketball, ran track, and just growing up in the 252, you know, we were around so many different communities, and like you kind of brought up, Matt, we had so many different groups of people come through our house. It wasn't just like this one-size-fits-all. It was so much diversity, so much culture. I mean, our iPods at the time went from rap music to country music, right, just for music, so we were listening to anything and everything. And my dad, you know, would play some beach music. So growing up in Moorhead City, the music itself is an example of the diversity. I got a comment on that because do you know, I remember making remember burning CDs back before iPods. It'd be like summer mix. And I can still remember my CD. It'd be like Kenny Chesney, Keg in the Closet. <laughs> <laughs> then, um, then um, Bone Crusher, Never Scared, and then like, it was the most ADHD music. Yeah, gosh, I forgot about that, man. That's back in the day. I, I had that same situation. I had the cassette tape, and I was I had like Beethoven. He was hot at that yeah. time when I was a kid. Because obviously, being an athlete, that's something that people who don't play team sports they don't really get exposed to, especially something like football or basketball. There is a lot of diversity, but you're out there a lot of times for the same reason, which is you're on that same team. Absolutely, and and culture is a big word for me. You know, a lot of people, I think they think of sports and they think of just the literal surface level of them, right? The the sport itself, the rules, the the ball you're using. Is it football? Is it baseball? Is it basketball? I think the part that when you actually play sports, as y'all, you know, as y'all have experienced too, you get into the deeper levels that you take off the field, that you take off the court with you in your daily life. And so a lot of things that we learn through sports, you know, developed perseverance, resilience, how to fail without becoming a quitter, like these principles, these life principles that 
unfortunately, a lot of people that didn't play sports, if they didn't get it from somewhere, they probably don't have this core principle. And, you know, my goal, and I appreciate you guys having me on this magician and jock amazing thing y'all got going. But, you know, to have fun with it and to shed some light for people that just need that hope, you know, you never know what somebody's going through. So, you know, whatever seed and pearl that somebody can take away, whatever golden nugget gets them through another tough day, maybe they're going through some BS in their life and they just take something away, you know, but Moorhead City is where the culture and the roots through sports, through working out, through fitness and the culture and diversity of being exposed to a lot of different things um that is what really started you know the roots of being successful in life of developing through my career you know that's changed hats over times but i love this one quote and it says um if you serve the purpose of this season in your life you'll never have to find your calling your calling will keep finding you and you know that's really stuck with me because i think a lot of times we're like what's my purpose what what's my purpose in life and I think we sometimes limit ourselves if we're not careful that we think it has to look a certain way, you know, and we, we kind of talked before about self-awareness, like it's really good to become self-aware of what I'm good at, what I'm not, maybe not talented or good at, but at some point that hat may change. I may be a personal trainer in one season of my life and three years later, I'm in pharmaceutical sales. So the hat may change, but the culture is transferable. And if you have a good culture about you, if you're really out to serve others and you self-develop with grind, like we can talk about, the sky is truly the limit. You can do anything you want, you know, and find out what you're good at along the way. We talked to a bunch of vets and we, we sports people on uh, this channel and fully vetted. And there seems to be a matter of importance to being part of a team. Why do you think that is? Great question. And Billy, uh, you know, for me, success is something that's sometimes individualized, but true significance is when you're as part of something that's bigger than any one of us, right? Significance of being a part of a community, right? Like uh, little town, big sound type things, right? Like where you really are a part of something that's bigger than any one person. And to me, that's really where you find true purpose. If it's just about you, you're going to face a circumstance. Maybe somebody dies in your family. Maybe you go through a relationship, a challenge, a breakup, a divorce. You, you have a terrible thing happen with your career for a moment. Uh, COVID happens. Holy shit. And next thing you know, you, you, you're out of money or the, the gas prices go through the roof during a certain season of our political life, right? So all these circumstances are inevitable, like death and taxes. You're going to get punched in the face. And to your mm. point, Billy, if you're not a part of something bigger than you, if it's just about Chase or it's just about any one of us, if that's the biggest it gets for you, you're missing the boat. You're going, you're going to face something bigger than you. And if you're not a part of a community that people need you, people, you're a part of something bigger than just one person, that's when you're really going to be significant and leave a legacy. You know, leave a legacy for us that started in the 252 in Morehead City. And it's worldwide now. So to me, that's a commonality. You know, thanks, shout out to our vets and, and shout out to my family, my community back in Morehead City. I take them everywhere with me. So um, that's really what I'm about is, is being a part of something truly bigger than, than I could ever be. And it's humbling. You know, you learn that other people are talented in different ways and to bring that talent out of each other and build off each other and compete in a healthy way is a great thing. I would piggyback on that sport especially in we're in such a pc culture with sports it's truly meritocracy right the best player is gonna play especially at the higher levels you go <laughs> the coach's job is to win games it's not to appease and actually fans will get really mad if coaches seem to be playing favoritism you know you see that they're like oh they're just playing this guy because he was a first round pick but he's the backup's actually better they'll, they'll get really mad at that i think it's one of the last few places where there's true true meritocracy because there's a winner and a loser that's the biggest thing as an athlete you kind of miss you know because you you're working, you're doing daily stuff and you could have a great week or a bad week, but maybe you work for a company where it really doesn't matter. You know, like it's gotta be completely a self-starter, your, your own. 
And that's something, I mean, it's really hard, if not outright impossible to replicate anywhere else. I mean, you grew up playing sports, Billy. Yeah. And I, uh, for me, my parents weren't big sports people. They, they weren't the ones that were going to say, well, I'm just going to take you to, to martial arts. I'm not, I'm just going to take you to football or baseball. So for me and my brother, we were the only ones that played sports. We would actually have to get on our bikes and make an effort to go out to it. And, and once you put that into it, it just raises the level a little higher of, Hey, I busted my ass to get here. I'm going to smack the quarterback in the mouth. I'm going to, you know, whatever I have to do. Barry talks like he's a headhunter, man. I swear. <laughs> Look, I mean, you don't lose these, this many brain cells. But, I mean, just there's a lot of life lessons, but, shit, at the end of the day, it's fun as hell, too, man. That's, like, where all your friends are. I mean, to this day, you get together, you get our group together, there's going to be some kind of competing. Someone's going to get a ball out. It's going to be – you know, who can throw that ball the furthest? 100%. You automatically bring back stories about, yeah, remember this and that. And remember when Matt was naked running down? What? That's right. Yeah, what? It's, it's those shared experiences. Do you see that, Chase? I had guys I played college ball with that were in my wedding, and, you know, I still talk to them to this day. Are you still close with any of the guys you played with? Absolutely. From Moorhead City, all the sports, you know, my two brothers, like me, Nick, and Matt, you know, we grew up around six to eight generations of different level ages, athletes. So through middle, Moorhead Middle, West Carteret, you know, then Croatan came about through those years as well. But just the Carteret County, East Carteret, West Carteret, like just this camaraderie and playing three to four sports, you know, football, baseball, basketball, running track, like you're coming across so many different communities then to your point, Dodge, of taking it to college and, and the fraternity there, if you will, of college football, of knowing like you're a student of the game at that point and knowing that it's just bigger than showing up even more on game day. Like game day is 365 days before the game. Like don't mm. just get hyped up on game day. You're getting hyped up in the shadows. The trophy is the sweat on your shirt. And you kind of said it a while ago, like PC and politically correct, like that, that is not where it's at. It's about being authentic, being vulnerable, being raw, winning together, losing together. It should hurt when you lose, right? And learn from it. Like, what can you take with it? Um, there's so many people that when stuff gets stuff, we live in such an entitled world. Like nothing, the best thing, one of my best philosophies that I've tried to always hold on to, as flawed as I can be at times, is like nobody owes me shit. Nobody owes me anything. I'm not owed anything. I'm not entitled to anything. And that to me is the only way to really have gratitude is when you're like, just re wake up tomorrow. The world owes me nothing. I have to earn everything with blood, sweat and tears and go out and get it. And that's where sports, you know, the memories, like y'all were saying, Billy, like the memories flow of all of the things I've learned, you know, like, and that's part of why like you hear the youth these days of participation trophies and it just takes away of all of the things I learned from failing, right? It's not about getting complacent or used to failing, but like, man, like if I didn't lose the game, I don't, man, how thankful I am for my losses, right? Because it taught me how to persevere. And, you know, as 50 Cent says, sunny days wouldn't be special if it weren't for rain, right? Joy wouldn't be so good if it weren't for pain. And that's really through sports, through the background, like you said, Dodge, through the fraternity of friends and communities that will be family forever, right? You know what you went through together, all the dark moments, all the fun moments, like all the losses, all the wins, and what you can take into your career, into your relationships, but leaving that legacy and for others to follow and helping the youth and, you know, people behind you pick them up, help somebody else up. You know, I got a lot of buddies who, who play like um... – you know, like swimmers or golfers or tennis players. And I think you, you miss out on something that's there's, there's a big difference between a, a solo sport and a, and a team sport. Um, but so you played, uh, let, let people know what you, uh, so you're not just talking all these platitudes. You, you played just like all of us. We, we all had athletic uh, ADHD where one season was over, we were ready to play something else. What, what did you play? You know, maybe talk about in high school, there's a lot of people from West Carter listening. And then what you went on to play uh, at the college level. You know, in high school, like I said, I played four sports, football, quarterback, free safety. Um, and, and 
never came off the field. Uh, baseball, pitching, you know, in third base. My dad played baseball at NC State. So, um, and then AAU baseball through the, the 252 area and Legion baseball, you know, right there in Moorhead City for post 46. So, and then at West Carteret through the sports. So, you know, football, baseball, basketball, shooting guard, um, and really basketball and track was really to me self-development sports. Like a lot of, I would encourage any youth that I talk to, to continue playing all sports, even if some are for just self-development of athleticism and conditioning. Because for me, I knew I probably wasn't going to play college basketball. I was self-aware enough to know I'm never going to be 6'6 or have, you know, LeBron or Michael Jordan stats out here. But for me, it was a development to get better at baseball, to get better at football. So then I went to Elon University and that's where I played football. Um, I did practice with the baseball team some as well. Baseball was your love, right? Absolutely. I would say also, though, that the world we grew up in, that baseball had more seasons of, like, practicing. Football, if you didn't just do it on your own, we didn't really have leagues set up like AAU and Legion for football. Yeah. You know, so that's maybe something to look into for the youth out there. But, you know. For me, baseball was a, a first love, and it was just something that we always played. And my dad yeah. being one of my heroes playing at NC State, you know, when we were at West Carteret, it just made sense. Um, and then the Legion and AAU. But football at Elon University was really where I was, like, self-aware, like, okay, I got more potential to keep developing in football. And it really became, like, my true love of my sport. You know, I love all sports and all you can – get out of them all you can learn from them being a part of something bigger than yourself but at elon football was where it really really became very clear that that was my sport i was at app state when you were at elon we, we i remember we played yeah, together app state was re the real deal three national championships when i played against them uh you know we're the southern conference you got georgia southern who beat university of georgia one of those years app state being like michigan state i mean it was just you know, big time football. And a lot of these guys were like two inches shorter, 20 pounds lighter, but running a four, two, 40 yard dash mm -hmm. four, four at two fifty. you know, just great athletes around that just got overlooked. Maybe they weren't in the state playoffs. A lot of times, you know, as far as going to the, the big, big time, you know, sec or ACC schools. Um, so for me, you know, when I went to Elon, that was really my thing is I, I was a walk-on, I was a recruited walk-on. And so they paid attention to me. They knew I was, uh, you know, good enough to be there, to be athletic enough to be there. But I was really going to have to prove myself because there's a little bit of profiling, right? When you're not a full scholarship athlete that was on that state championship high school team, it's like, all right, what's, what's the catch here? He's a walk-on, but he's pretty good. You know, this white boy can run. <laughs> like, what what's it about? So... For me, I knew I couldn't just be just as good as a scholarship player that they've invested $80,000, $100,000 in. I had to be better. So I redshirted my freshman year at Elon. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to have to embarrass somebody at practice a few times to start getting opportunities. And it didn't happen overnight. It took me two years of the late nights at the gym when nobody's watching on top of the mandatory weightlifting and film sessions and practice, all that stuff. So it really was like, you if you don't have a passion, you don't have a chance, right? Um, and I was talented enough to be there. I was self-aware enough to know, you know, I'm not Rudy, but I'm not going to be the most gifted athlete of all time. Got a question for you. So obviously, you've got an incredible work ethic. Uh, you know, I, I was listening to Damon Lillard, Lillard talk about Kobe Bryant. He has sort of the same or had sort of, sort of the same that, they would show up to practice, but he had already been there for two hours before practicing, you know, killing it. So you had to do that for, you know, just to go above and beyond. But is that, do you think that's embedded inside you or embedded inside you, not embedded? Uh, or is it something that you learn or how was that? Great, how did that come about? Great question. I think it's a combination of things. And, you know, back to Kobe Bryant, the mama mentality, you know, RIP, see you again one day, man. But, uh, mm. you know, to your point, I think it's something that has to be inside of you, but you have to be in an environment that pulls it out of you. And it also has to be something you do have a passion for. You really have to have a passion 
because years, I mean, literal years are going to have to go by of going the extra mile and going above and beyond what's mandated and no credit, like no guarantee, no guarantee you're going to get a chance for sure. No guarantee you're not going to get injured. No guarantee this coach is going to believe in you, even if you prove yourself. And so I think you have to have something in you that's really a word I like is indomitable, like where you're, you, you will never be defeated or subdued. Like you literally are indomitable. You're just like undefeated of like, nobody's going to beat me. And, and it's not necessarily always against somebody else. It's this internal battle we have where we start believing or doubting ourselves too much, or we just get back up again and again and again. And it's got to come from somewhere deep. So I think you have to have it in you, Billy but I think it has to be pulled out of you. And it's almost like a habit too, right? Like we talked a little bit about habits before where a habit takes time to develop and be intentional, but you also have to create it by actually just getting uncomfortable. And for me, just like weightlifting now is my sport in a lot of ways for myself, you know, getting comfortable, being uncomfortable has to become a thing. Like it's gotta become normal to be uncomfortable. If you're expecting this comfort zone bullshit that the world is always promoting, right? Stay in your comfort zone. That is, it's safe. You're right. Takes no risk, but there's no reward. That's for soft people. And that's not me. So I've never seen anybody accomplish anything great from a comfort zone. It's just never happened. You know, greatness comes when you're vulnerable, taking risk, you know, to do something that's just abnormal. And one thing, you know, another person I respect, like you said, Kobe Bryant is David Goggins, right? And this mentality, one thing he talked about in his videos is callousing your mind, just like a callus on your hands, right? Working outside, callousing your mind, getting in those places that are not fun, not convenient, you know, whether it's waking up at 4 a.m. or just grinding when nobody is watching, like when, when the shadows and yourself are just in this dark cave. And you just have this vision of what's got to happen. And that becomes your norm. It comes back to what you brought up, you know, that it's, it's, it's just your nap. It's your daily state that you're in this calloused mind of constant, just grind grit mentality. With this channel, I think we've learned to kind of push the envelope a little bit and co go out of your comfort zone, which you were talking about, Chase. But it's also, it's fun to kind of push the boundaries People might gawk at you and look at you funny, but a lot of those are self-imposed. You know, you talked about the prisons you can have in your mind. It's a lot. We build it up a lot scarier in our own head. I remember when I was, um, oh, we are worried about what people think of us, which that's normal, right? That's a survival thing. Like you want to know if everyone likes you or wants to kill you. Like that is a normal, you can't get rid of that. But I remember um, there, I had a um, Bible, we were doing Bible study what was it? What's it called? Sunday school? Sunday school. Sunday school before church. Yeah. And we had a um, pastor and he said something about like, you know, don't worry about what people think about you because if you knew how little they actually thought about you, you'd probably be offended. And I, that's always stuck out yeah. to me. We are like, we're all in our own head and so was everybody else. You know, <laughs> they're thinking about themselves. Oh, well, I mean, we, we magnify things ten, tenfold when I'm on stage and if I screw up a, a, you know, trick that I've done a thousand times. I go out and I'm like, how was the show? I'm like, oh, I screwed up on that one. They've already forgotten or didn't even see it. You yeah. know, they're like, oh, okay, well, I didn't know you screwed up. Something you guys just brought up, man, and you hit the nail on the head in so many ways. You know, I love this one phrase. It says, only those who are willing to go too far can truly find out how far one can go, right? To not limit yourself like Billy brought up and Dodge, just like you were talking about, you know, for me, when we're talking about like being an individual, right, keeping integrity to be an individual, like I'm a believer, I'm a Christian, you know, for me, part of that is God created each of us to be individuals, not to conform and be sheep that just follow the next cool trend, right? So I think there's a self-awareness thing that has to happen of like, okay, am I being chased or am I wearing this color shirt just because that girl might like it, or my friend said that's the cool thing to do, or am I okay sticking out like a sore thumb occasionally? Am I okay to be vulnerable that some people are just going to misunderstand you? And to me, 
when you start getting misunderstood often, that's when you're really doing something special. A lot of times, you know, like if you're being misunderstood, you're sticking out, you're making people a little uncomfortable, but you have good intentions in your heart. You know who you are. That's when you're doing something pretty unique. And, you know, we live in these lifestyles, right? The world is like eat, sleep, work, eat, sleep, work, eat, sleep, work, raise a kid, eat, sleep, work. And the next thing you know, if you're not careful, you become this robot that didn't really like take chances, get vulnerable, get out of your comfort zone of this robotic, non-memorable like lifestyle. And you're like, all right, I'm going on that tangent here. I'm going to go do that. I'm going to wear that shirt, even if everybody thinks I'm an idiot, because that's what I want to freaking wear, you know? So being an individual, keeping integrity to an individual is very important. And that takes a lot of vulnerability because you said it earlier, Billy, we choose what we magnify. If we magnify every insecurity and they're on high alert all the time, we're just magnifying this and we create this culture that we're just followers. I'm going to follow whatever's cool because that way I don't stick out. And say, no, screw that. I want to stick out. I want to be different, not in a conceited, arrogant way, but I want to keep integrity to be an individual. And that's what eventually turns to that phrase, what makes you awkward in one season of your life or two, what makes you awkward in one season makes you relevant in the next. So if you had, we have a lot of young listeners that listen to the, or watch the channel. Do you have any advice or any kind of, I mean, is there like a, practice they can do or should they just go out and say you know what i'm going to wear a goofy shirt and i don't care what people think and just to try it what do you have any kind of thoughts on that i would say don't be afraid to fail and almost expect it without becoming like happy with losing at times or not gaining everybody i mean back to christianity even jesus couldn't please everybody right the church misunderstood him like religion versus relationship right and and getting distracted. So for me, the advice I would have for youth is don't be afraid to fail. Get out of your comfort zone. Get used to doing that. Do something every day or every week at least that you're like, oh shit, this is uncomfortable. Like this is not fun right now. I got up at 4 a.m. and ran five miles. Like that shit sucked. Or, you know, just doing something that's just out of your norm and not letting yourself get so limited where you become complacent. You don't grow, you don't develop, you don't become more self-aware of something. I'm not good at that, or I'm really good at that. And so for me, you know, not thinking that everybody's acceptance is a good thing. In fact, some people that like you, it's just because you make them so comfortable that they think they're better than you, right? I mean, we see that with some relationships, like some girls, they like safe guys, guys that they're already, you know, to the general public more attractive than, um, or that they can just beat in some ways. If they lose them, it's no big deal. You know, so some people like to feel like the alpha in every group. And then the next thing you know, if if you are kind of, you know, not an alpha, they like hanging out with you because you make them feel like better about themselves. So I think it's it's about just don't be afraid to get out of your comfort zone. Be okay if people laugh at you a little bit. Like there's a lot of bullies out there in a bad way in the world for the youth these days that are literally projecting their own battles on other people, right? It has nothing to do with their audience. They're taking all these problems they have and putting it out on you. And so, you know, be okay with being misunderstood. Wear that shirt that nobody else likes. Get laughed at and be okay with it. Yeah, I mean, it goes back a lot. The older you get, like I'm more Matt today than I've ever been. You know, the we did a show early on Right. We called it Take Your Mask Off. And sure, it was kind of ironic with everything that's happening. But you know, how, like you're with your boys and everybody's like, yeah, sports and man and fire. And then the girl calls and they're like, hey, hey, babe. Hey, how are you? <laughs> so like they have like a, that 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 boyfriend mask they put on. And then when they're if you call it like if my wife calls me, I'm at work. I'm like hello, this is Matt. And she's like, you're hitting me with your business voice. You know, and I think there are certain times we're not saying to just be controversial for the sake of being controversial, but if you're going to get blamed for anything, or if you're going to get shit talked about you for anything, which hopefully you are, which means you're on the, the people's right consciousness on, yeah. and like be intentional about it. We did that with the show about being a celebrity. Like being, if you want to be a celebrity, like be intentional about it. If I'm a police officer today, 
I don't want to be a celebrity because it's probably not for something good. Exactly. You know, and then also for, for young people, because I can just remember back for me, like everyone's trying to figure out what they want to be when they grow up. Chase, I don't know about you. I'm still trying to figure that out. And it's at some point you got to give yourself permission to like, dude, just be yourself. And that doesn't mean screw everyone else or no one else has anything to offer, but it is be self-aware, be great at what you're good at. And that starts with what am I actually good at? What am I naturally inclined to do and realize most of us, we downplay what we're good at naturally. Like I downplay my ability to kick a football 70 yards because I could do it. It wasn't that big of a deal to me to this day. It's still a thing I'm paid. I was paid the most handsomely for. So you kind of got to get out of your own head. And I mean, Chase is extremely self-aware, extremely comfortable in his own skin, even though it's covered up. But, <laughs> but uh, and one of those, so it's, uh, he's got, you've got tremendous, tremendous perspective. And really you can only get perspective by having experiences you yeah know what i'm I mean, saying yeah i mean look you go back to you don't know what what you're going to be when you grow up hell i'm pushing 50 and i'm let's start a youtube channel and you know do a young kids thing or whatever but yeah you know I, it's i feel like it's important that people express themselves uh and go you know hit that uncomfortable zone but you talked about chase because I, I think if you keep that in it kind of because I did it for years I wasn't I was pretending to be Billy the the dad Billy the husband and if just you know I hope his kids aren't listening <laughs> I, no I mean I, you know what I mean though I was I, I wasn't I wasn't being my true self until yeah, I took that mask you're, off. you're acting man and, and I you know I, I felt much better after I did that I which, became the real me which we all do man Chase you've heard the term stay in your stay in your lane and I think that's very true. The problem is there's a lot of people that are in lanes they don't want to be in. And it's I'm, like, it's actually killing them. And like, once you find your own lane, like you found for yourself, dude, like it could be scary to kind of bet on yourself. But then when you get it and you're like, holy shit, I'm on the, I'm in the chase lane right now. Like no one can beat me. No one can beat chase in the chase lane. You, you get what I'm saying? Absolutely. And competing is a great thing. And the biggest competitor should always be yourself, right? It should be you five years from now, or am I getting where I want to be? And, you know, you guys kind of brought it up back to that phrase, what makes you awkward in one season makes you relevant in the next. How many people youth go through interviews? Another piece of advice is when you're going through an interview process, literally be yourself. I'm not saying don't prepare and strategize, but trying to be inauthentic and just a fake version of what's more politically correct is not going to get you that job. In fact, you're going to get a job you don't like with people that like the fake version of you rather than being the authentic version of yourself. The people that are supposed to like you, that see you, who, for, who, who you for you, uh, who you really are, are the ones that eventually are going to be like, okay, we like the raw, authentic version of that person. We don't have to, they don't have to check boxes and wear a certain outfit to be accepted. So to me, you know, keeping that, it goes back to that authenticity. And a lot of youth, another thing about that, Billy, that you kind of brought up is, you know, people get so limited too soon. Like self-awareness, like we're talking, Dodge, you know, self-awareness is so important. But if I'm in middle school and I think I'm a second baseman, my, maybe I should, I'll be in the major leagues one day in left field. But I, in my mind, I thought I was a second baseman forever. I'm a running back. So there's no way I could be a linebacker, you know. So I think sometimes we get too limited in what my career can look like and what my position in sports can be, you know, and what I can and can't be. And I think that's where just discernment of like, all right, this is naturally who I'm supposed to be. I have some bad habits I can improve on but I better not change the, the literal DNA and the wiring of how I'm in. I should embrace it. And you kind of said, who am I going to be now? Like I'm 37. I want to keep embracing. And as we get more and more mature, even though we're men, right, is, is have fun with it, but embrace the unique qualities that make you an individual. Don't just become this sheep follower of the next cool thing that your friend wears. In fact, I encourage people to hang out with me that sometimes act, look nothing like me to a degree. You could have dreadlocks. You could wear a different outfit. 
we can still have some similar principles when it comes down to it. It's so true, man. Uh, and speaking of <laughs> being comfortable, being uncomfortable, <laughs> um, I can remember I was, this was a couple of years ago. I might've been up in Pennsylvania or whatever, but I got a notification on my phone like, Hey, check this out. And it was a video of someone or like a screen capture of someone that I recognized really, really? well. And it was for some television, some television show, television celebrities. And come to find out it was our main man. So maybe, maybe talk to people about that. Uh, Cause that is a hilarious story, but also that's your like, Hey, when, when people ask why Chase is like, shit, why not? So take, take it away. You got to talk about that. Going on a naked TV show on VH1. That was an interesting experience to say the least. You know, we all are ships that are not meant to be in the Harbor. We're meant to sail. So right there off the shore in Moorhead city, right? We pull up, but we're meant to sell. And, and a lot of people are playing life so safe. So for me, of course, you go through these like, is this crazy? Is this cool? And it was just an opportunity. And, you know, um, when you get these rare, unique moments, people are going to judge you anyway, right? Back to that old interview process for youth get, trying to get that job on LinkedIn. Like people are going to judge you. You know, if your heart's right, people are going to misunderstand you. And so with this unique opportunity, of going on this unique show with no clothes. Like it was just a unique opportunity. Yeah, set, set that um, up. So you, you were uh, like, no, I get, but there is a little bit, as men, although we talked about this, we like to philosophize, like turn everything into some philosophical thing. What, what on earth, they didn't just see you in a mall. They didn't discover you. You were actively like, shit, I might as well try out, like send out my resumes to some television show. <laughs> So yeah, so long story short, I had went through a recent breakup. I'd gotten in, you know, fitness and working out at all. Get naked. Gotta get naked with someone else. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you know. I'm telling you, you see guys who are ripped that are like on fire getting in shape, it's a good chance they just went through a breakup. So um, I know I did. Yeah, man. It gave me a taste overall of what like I respect actors and actresses and like TV show, movie star, like I got a taste of it. I mean, I literally needed a secretary after I went on this show to keep up with like DMs, text messages, Facebook messages, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, like as these, you know, social media platforms were taking off, it's kind of the same time as like I went on this naked TV show. And so I was sitting at home though, to kind of back up a little bit. And, you know, I was with my brothers and I was like, you know, like, I'm single, I'm ripped, <laughs> like, I'm not a shallow person, but like, I'm having fun with it. I'm still young. And like, I saw this Stone Cold Steve Austin show on TV of like this fitness show. And I applied to that. And I'm like, huh, this, there's this dating naked TV show. I'm going to apply to that. And then I applied to like a big brother show. And I'm like, you know what, I'm just going to apply to these. So I did. And I'm thinking, ah, maybe get a call like you send a few pictures you have you say a few things about yourself <laughs> what kind of pictures are you sending to... <laughs> i would have sent one i, I would have sent one of me naked and just put the little sensor bar dude i would have made that thing like two feet long <laughs> like you gotta have me on there dude i would have put an yeah, elephant it's... face yeah. yeah a little some hammer style you know a little mc hammer time but, uh, but yeah, you send some pictures and then they called me and I'm thinking, you know, we got caller ID nowadays. I'm thinking like, who is this random, like Las Vegas and LA numbers calling me. And I look at my phone and I'm like, all right, I'll answer it. So I did. And I'm like, okay, this is the TV show. And so they're like, Hey, Chase, this is so-and-so with, you know, this dating naked TV show. And I'm like, oh my God, this is crazy. So I'm sitting here with my unique job that we can kind of talk about. And they're like, yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. I kind of skipped, I kind of skipped over that. You were in the fitness industry for a long time. Now you switched over to the to medical sales. Yeah. A unique <laughs> medical device. So <laughs> I went, and what uh, device would that be? Chase? Yeah, man. Medical grade penis pumps. It was really interesting. Um, and you go like, I'm telling you, what makes you awkward in one season makes you relevant in the next. And you never know what the next season of your story may look like. I went from like 
loving training people and fitness and sports will always and forever be a part of my life. It will never go away. I will love sports till I'm in the grave twitching and then on fitness and weightlifting and working out will always be a part of me. But I kind of got curious, you know, my mom being a nurse, my brother a nurse, my other brother in orthopedics, and with this personal training and wellness director, strength coach back, background of about 10 years, it was like, okay, nothing's wrong, but what's next? So I start applying to like medical cells. What is pharmaceutical cells? What is medical device cells? You know, and what does that look like? And could I truly transfer all the culture that I had gotten out of fitness and serving people over to this? And then I didn't know exactly all the jobs I was applying for. You know how some, re some like uh, job applications are kind of like vague. So I find out when I'm like applying to this job that it's, literal medical grade penis pumps vacuum erection devices and it, it's got that sense of humor to it as well on the serious side it's mainly for prostate cancer yeah. and erectile dysfunction so like people that have had radical prostatectomy surgery people that you know 70 year olds that can't get an erection anymore some unique circumstances where some people that are younger that you know very sensitive subject so of course, going in look, truly urology and doctor's offices where you're dealing with patients that have had cancer, maybe they're really self-conscious about this whole topic, right? We're talking about penis pumps and trying to be serious. And, Don't you smile. <laughs> so like, <laughs> It's an interesting conversation. So when this naked TV show that I applied for, they were like, man, that's really your job. Like you really sell penis pumps like that's a real thing in urology and medical centers and i'm like yeah and oh by the way you know i'm still serving people and oh by the way i'm making twice as much financial freedom as i've ever made to pay off bills to get my student loans paid off like that was a big deal you know like to because like, didn't, they, um, di didn't they, they had shown interest in, in you ahead of time because you were this you know beefed up kind of these shows are trying to get how many random yeah, people so, and personalities. So absolutely. Everybody has a little bit different role, you know, and like, I guess after they saw some of my physique, you know, and my body and this and that, and then they hear I, I saw penis pumps on top of that. I mean, all this together. And then they're like, wait a minute, this guy's not just a meathead. He's kind of got a little bit of brain in him. He's not just this jock that's stupid. You know, he's got some education and I think they were most surprised, like from my perspective, that I was actually a deep person that truly wants to help people. Like, I don't want to just, we were talking about earlier, right? I don't want to just serve Chase and be just, you know, but I do want to have a great life. I want to experience things and have fun along the way. So Carpe Diem, right, sees the opportunity. I apply to these shows. They do this interview on the phone. They find out my job, my unique medical sales job. And then they're like, okay, we're gonna move you to the next round. So they do this Skype interview with one of their employees and, and you're fully clothed at first, at first. And you're talking about, <laughs> I'm, from, I'm from Moorhead City, like North Carolina, 252 forever. Yeah, like, you know. Did they make a Moorhead joke? <laughs> Say what? Uh, Do they make a Norhead joke? <laughs> oh, like the play on words, yeah. Yeah, remember that uh that cinema downtown that was for sale? It was Norhead for sale, and I remember yeah. that made it on uh, <laughs> Ebon's web. Yeah, so there was all kinds of uh yeah, man. Sorry, keep yeah, going. man. But yeah, so you know, at the end of the the funny part about the Skype, for what it's worth to the listeners out there, is at the end of this clothes interview that actually was kind of like a regular interview. Like, you know, it's a, it's called dating naked. So it's like, why are you single? What do you want in your marriage one day? What have you been through in your relationships? What are some qualities about the partner you want to marry one day? Like these deep questions, like, oh my God, what do I fully want on the spot? Like, what do you want in your marriage? And what have you been through? And like, man, I've been through a lot of pain. Like, you know, when you've gone through a breakup, like it's, it's hard, right? Like to find yourself again. And so we're asking all these deep questions and I'm giving them some deep chase responses. And then the next thing they go, they say, okay, stand up, face the camera, say your name and where you're from and get naked and stand facing this camera. And I'm like, 
do you do the helicopter dance or you just stand here like what do you do <laughs> I'm like can you give me two minutes until like yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the AC down. I'm like, where's my pills? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, man. Let's uh so so anyway, we, we're sitting here doing this. I do that. Then they find out they're like, man, can you show us this pump thing? Like, do you have a demo or something? And they're like, yeah. man, sweetheart, no, it's, I haven't taken it off all day. That thing's <laughs> <laughs> so they're like, you have such a unique story, Chase. Like they were giving me some compliments, you know, and they're like, and you're not just the shallow meathead, which I really like that they noticed that, right? Like these are people that created a naked TV show. They're pretty like their personalities are pretty strong. So then they're like, we're going to fly you out to LA and interview you in person. And they fly you out there. You have to stand naked in a room with like clothed people that run this show. Like they're the CEOs, you know, CFOs, CCOs of these shows. and managers and they're asking you all these deep philosophical questions and just all of a sudden they're like all right you get naked and you're standing there completely naked facing this crowd of people that's fully clothed and they're just literally their head level sitting in chairs is like at the mid level of you and they're just asking you questions i think a part of it too back to like the actor and actresses i respect like they have a camera like a huge camera which I think was to make sure before they invest in you to fly you to the Philippines, put you on an actual TV show, like the reality of like, all right, I got to go on a TV show. I'm going to have to fly across the world where the 12 hour difference from Moorhead City and I'm going to sit here. They're going to invest money in me. They're going to make sure with a doctor with 500 questions to make sure I'm not like suicidal or liability type things. And the other people that I'm going to be there, they're not at risk with me. Like I am from the two five two, but we good people out here, you know. So <laughs> you can't. You can't uh, what do I say? You can't take Carver County anywhere. No. So. <laughs> yeah, man. In the Philippines. So, so Chase, uh, let me ask you a question about the the questionnaire they gave it. So I was on America's Got or tried out for America's Got Talent. Uh, Mikel Buck with was on here. Right? He was, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Mikel Buck was on here and, and he was talking about when he was on The Voice and the questions they asked. Do you think they were just looking to see if you had a story behind you or were they actually, actually trying to get a psychological? Probably both, right? I would like, is this guy, is this guy marketable, but is he also going to murder everyone <laughs> as he gets there? Like At the end of, no, great question, Billy. And I agree with you there, Dodge. Like there's a little bit of a combination of things. I think the questions from the doctor, also from the panel of like people that run the show, I think there's a piece of it that is liability. Like they're investing thousands of dollars, not only to pay you, not only to put you on a live network and invest their film crew, their other cast, like their other people, they, they're, they're going on the show. Like this is like taking, you know, the bachelor and the bachelorette, combining those shows kind of in its own way and taking everybody's clothes off. So like there's some there's some pieces that are pretty interesting, um, but I also think at the end of the day it's a business, right? They have to make it entertaining. Oh. So like there was one guy on the show that he was really quirky and funny. There's this girl in the show that was like kind of like the uh, what's it Jersey Shore type, you know, mentality that's like all crazy and out there. And then there's me, this jock from Moorhead City, if you will, like with Dodge over there, my man Jock, you know, and. And like you kind of said, Billy, there's a piece of it that I think they truly were trying to make sure like you're you're not a risk. At the same time, are you entertaining? So it's a pretty unique compliment and combination of things you have to be to actually get asked because they're investing in you at that point, right? That you're going to entertain some people. You're going to make their views on TV go well. Like it's out there, you know, like um, to be on this TV show. So and it was a cool experience like back to carpe diem like seize this opportunity i mean could i play it safe and not go on this tv show and no risks or screw that like can i go live can i get my boat out of the harbor and go sail some right and so i decided to go it was an amazing experience no regrets i can't imagine not going on it now right like looking back that it was just hey, hold on, hold on. can i can i play it safe 
can I just go on a TV show where everyone's wearing clothes? Or should I like, let me not do both at once time. Like, I'm going to go off TV. That's not enough. That's too safe. You know, it's, it's way safe. Let me get naked. Yeah. So, yeah, man. I mean, I don't think you have to be as extreme as me. I don't think I'm better than somebody because I'm extreme. But I would say this, like, get out of your harbor. Go sell your yeah. ship whatever the hell that means to anybody and everybody, to the youth, to the adults, to the 50 year olds. I don't care where we are in our journey of this beautiful life and messy, messy life, right? Like how many masterpieces aren't messy? Every mm. masterpiece is messy. So you better go ahead and get your hands dirty and not be afraid to jump off that cliff. You're going to skin your knee. You're going to skin your knee. I promise you like death and taxes, you're going to get punched in the face in this thing called life whether you're in the 252 in Moorhead City or down here in Florida or somewhere else, you're going to get punched in the face. And so yeah. don't ever get so like scared that you live in this box and you don't really live. You're dead with a pulse. And so for me, that was the whole point of going on this fun, silly, crazy, interesting, naked TV show in the Philippines and living on this beautiful island with some awesome people that we all got to go back to our life and our jobs back in civilized America. I mean, like, I remember seeing like Walgreens and CVS, it literally looked like barns. So like, if you think America's bad, like go visit another country. A lot of them go to a third world country, go to like some rundown countries. It will make you aware that you are, you got it pretty good over here. Like we got our problems, but nothing like just basic, you know, things that we have here in America. But it was a it was a beautiful situation. It was amazing. Like back to the acting part, like you have to wait and they have to set up filming. And so there's a lot of respect that you learn what actors go through, like the big time actors that you see. After I went on that show, though, I came back, you know, you get some funny comments like, hey, bro, do those pumps really work? <laughs> like, <laughs> hey, you could have people hit you up like hey, my man don't have a problem, you know, but yeah. will it help him a little bit? You know, so it was well, interesting. The, the clip I got, so they played it up, which is smart. Like if I was their marketing guys, I'm like, dude, we are running with this, exactly. like this. And um, so I believe how it started, you just see this ball headed, like Mr. Olympia, but you see like his back. That was like the first, I think that's how it was. Or it was a clip I saw. You see like these muscles and guys, it was literally like, let's see if I can pull my mic around. You saw it and it was like, and I'm like, what is going on right now? And it was doing the thing like in 252 in the Philippines. You really can't take Carter County anywhere. Pumping up. And I want to say the clip was called like, so uh southern boy or something gets high on his own supply and i'm not afraid to say it man chase hadn't been afraid to get naked for a long time <laughs> and we called him the hammer or whatever we called him growing up if there's anyone that didn't need a penis pump it would be chase martin and uh i just thought that girl was probably like oh my god i'm gonna like <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> like how do I have a conversation? I feel like I'm about, about to get just like jousting with this guy. So. Yeah, look, if, if God gives you gifts, you, you better use them or yeah. display them. Hey, you know, like, and I think, man, I appreciate the breakdown. Like that was, it was a fun experience. It was so interesting. Like, it's like, oh yeah. Like you would forget you're naked. So I'm like, oh yeah, I'm naked right here on camera. And it was interesting. It was fun. I think the cool part about me and the person that I went on that, you know, experience the date with is that she realized I was actually a pretty deep person that I wasn't this shallow meathead like you could perceive. And it kind of goes back to like how often are all of us just misunderstood like a girl sees a guy with a shaved head or a girl sees a guy that has muscle and it's like, ah, there's another arrogant, egotistical meathead. And so to me, there's a big difference between somebody that's a good person, you know, having fun, dealing, you know, doing fun things, going out there, experiencing life, making some mistakes, maybe going a little extreme at times versus like somebody with bad motives, right? That just absolutely just goes out every day to just hurt somebody, make somebody's life worse. So for me, it was kind of cool to represent the 252 on the national, international stage. 
um, to also just kind of learn like what that lifestyle is like of like an actor and to really, you know, have fun and bring back some fun memories of like, and some compliments on national television, right? Like yeah. it's, it's an interesting feeling. Um, it's awesome. I, I thought it was, when I saw it, they did it tastefully. They weren't like making it, cause you know, with editing and camera yeah. tricks and cutting it up, you can make anyone look like a jerk or a moron or whatever, but they, they did it tastefully. Right. It, they could make like, imagine how bad a guy that looks like a meathead, that looks like a jock, just assume things that looks like he's got some muscle from weightlifting that sells penis pumps <laughs> on a naked TV show. How bad it could go. And if you want to make it. this guy out to be like a crazy <laughs> something creepy, like you could. And yeah. I'm glad they kept authenticity. They really did. They kept authenticity. The kind of there was no skit set up as as in memorized lines. Like we were naturally ourselves. Like we got to just be like, show up and be you genuinely. So I think there was a piece of that that I really appreciated about that show that they didn't try to make it out to be something it wasn't. Um, and, you know, I left there with a bunch of a good friends, a good respect for the people that went through this unique process with me. And honestly, like on a serious note, coming back after this crazy, unique, naked experience, like after that, the next job interview, you're just that much more confident. You're not as timid about everything. Like you're just, there's another practicing moment of getting out of your comfort zone. And could it be running a marathon? Could it be going on a naked TV show? Either way, like literally that extreme, if you take that and just get out of your comfort zone, regardless of how you do it, like that goes a long way in the culture you're going to be and how far you're going to limit yourself or develop as you, as you go through the stages of life. Yeah, I, Chase, I think that has a, with them allowing you to be you and showing the, the real person is probably a, a credit to you and the, the questionnaire and the surveys that they did with you. But I remember and, and you may be like this, that's the question I'm going to ask one day waking up, it was a Sunday and I, I was married at the time and I looked at my wife, I said, I think today I'm gonna breathe fire. And I studied how to breathe fire. And by the end of the day, I, I've got this four foot flame coming out of my mouth. But I just, do you do things just on a whim, like to see if to challenge yourself or is this something that was on your bucket list or? That's a great question. I think for me is the first question I always ask myself is, am I doing something with some good intentions? Like checking the intentions, right? Like I would never, I'm not a fan of evil. So I'm not a fan of dark things or bad or hurtful, like something to hurt somebody or go rob a bank. Like I don't, I don't go down like that. I don't get down with like negative vibes or bad or out to bully people or out to do something with some ulterior like negative intentions. So if that question is simply answered as I have good intentions, this is positive. It might be misunderstood. It might be unique. This is positive. Absolutely. Whatever, whether it's literally breathing fire like you, Billy, for, you know, learning new magical things, pu pulling things out of your comfort zone, becoming a student of whatever your craft is, right? And that, that hat, again, may change. You may be a personal trainer one season of your life, an accountant or a pharmaceutical sales or engineer the next. And even if it's not quite that drastic, like you said, you wear different hats. They're for the parents out there, right? You're going to be a parent one day or you're dating somebody, then you're going to get engaged, then you're going to get married. Then you live together, like paying bills, all these things, balancing that with watching sports, March Madness right now, right? So like, I think it's a constant, just am I touching on everything that matters, but am I not getting so comfortable that I'm complacent? It's good to be content, right? Like content is I'm okay with the process and where I'm at right now. If I'm in a weight loss journey of losing a hundred pounds, I'm okay that I've only lost 20. But not getting complacent that, ah, I lost 20, I'm done, I've arrived. You know, right. it's kind of like if I've gotten into that wedding dress or that swimsuit for the summer party that I don't just leave there like, ah, I'm done with that. Keeping this drive and this fuel and this fire of commitment and discipline that you don't always feel like it. And we've kind of talked about this a little bit, right? 
motivations are good, but not to be dependent on having to have everything feel the feel goods at all times to keep going to get yeah. that calloused mind where you just keep digging, keep finding ways to get uncomfortable, breathing the fire literally and figuratively for Billy, right? Mm -hmm. Breathing the fire, whatever that looks like. So absolutely. I love that question because to me, I think it's a culture thing. You know, I like this one quote. It says like strategy is important, right? But to be strategic, to be efficient, but culture eats strategy for breakfast. Like if you don't have your culture right, you can plan all you want. There's no replacement for that grind, right? There's no replacement for just getting your hands dirty, going out, putting on the shoes, not needing a trophy at the end of every run or at the end of every weightlifting session. You don't have to have the ESPN cameras on when you're punting the ball, right, Dodge? You just go do it because that's who you are. That's how you breathe. And when that becomes normal, like that's just your every day and how you take it in your relationship, how you take it in your job. Next thing you know, it's just like who you are. You don't have to put on like a facade. That's just how you are. That's how you're wired. And you, you've molded it and polished it over time. You know, so someone listen to this. Look, we all like to be comfortable, right? That's the, the, the thing about getting out of your comfort zone is you, what you're doing, your comfort zone isn't stagnant, right? So the reason you get out of your comfort zone is because you're expanding it, right? It, you're, by now going on a television show, now that's no longer scary to chase anymore. So if the opportunity comes up, he's like, hell yeah, man, I've done it. I was actually naked on it and I didn't spontaneously like explode and I wasn't disowned. So that's kind of the, that's why people get out of their comfort zone in the first place. We're not saying, dude, go skateboard down uh, uh, Ever. interstate yeah. or something stupid. Don't be dumb. But yeah, if you're constantly stretching yourself, this this shit was so awkward for me coming at like it was scary when we started doing the show then i told billy look let's shoot some videos i don't i just want to show up talk in front of the camera and i'm going to disappear you if you don't mind edit it upload it name it whatever i just had to get over that hump and then you see oh man it's actually not scary and in fact there's so many more positives than there were negatives yeah exactly and it, it just well you overcame that uh, uncomfortable, uh, uncomfortable feeling of the camera. I mean, I had already started, so I kind of was used to it. I mean, I, I know what I look at like, but when it takes a little effort to push that boundary, yeah. especially on a YouTube channel or getting on a TV show like Chase did. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, it's, and yeah, another just... thing, you know, there's so many there, we've put a lot of weight in our culture on social media, right? And there's some pros to social media. I don't think everything's bad. I think if you, not just social media, let's say you need a compliment, like a compliment's a great thing, right? Like somebody says something nice to you, but you have to have it or your day's bad. Or let's say somebody gives you a constructive criticism, right? You could do this better or your boss, you could do that better. Like if that's devastating to you, like, oh my God, I can improve. My mom said I was good at everything, you know, like, so I guess my point is, is that there's so many people that gets so bent out of shape over a comment of a constructive criticism, an area of improvement, or their day is made because that one girl or one guy said this one nice thing or loved or liked their post or wrote a comment or sent them a DM or sent them a text. Like, be careful. It's dangerous to me to, to be too dependent on needing a comment or devastated by a, a constructive moment. So for me, I think we got to be careful and check ourselves sometimes that we don't hold too much weight to back to other people's opinions, whether it's on social media, you know, like take it all in, hear everybody out, especially the people you respect. But at the end of the day, like be careful to hold too much weight to that and going on that show and, and doing other things, you know, that get out of my comfort zone, breathing the fire, right. Kick doing things that are just hard. Like I ran a 50 mile, ultra marathon and I'm 5'10", 220. I'm not built like the typical marathon runner. So to go out there and run like a 13 hour, a 13 hour, 50 miler, something I never thought of. I remember in high school, four laps around the track is one mile, right? That's a long what? ways. Like, holy shit. Oh my God. Like, so to do that was like, it pushed me to my limits. 
And like I left there, my mind was a little more callous than it already was. Like my grandma had just passed away, to be real with you, my gran granny Ann, um, and I dedicated it to her. But it was like just moments like that. It, it, it takes you somewhere that you don't go very often to that to that extreme. But then those dark moments that we all face, like what the hell are you going to do when you get punched in the face next? When that bad thing happens, like death and taxes, you're going to get punched in the face in life. And what are you going to do about it? Have you trained for the mental things that are about to happen when you go through that breakup, when you go through that death in the family, when a tragedy happens? Hell, you make a mistake and you beat yourself up about it. We choose what we magnify. Have you trained it all in some way, shape, or form, breathing fire, punting the football, you know, running a 50 mile ultra marathon, going on a TV show. Like, have you done something where when you look at it, you, you've ingrained some culture that I'm gonna persevere. I'm gonna make it through this. It's dark, it's dark as shit right now in this life I'm in, in this circumstance I'm in, but I still can see a light in this dark room because I know what's on the other side. If I just keep putting one foot in front of the other, I don't have to know A through Z, I know A to B. I know B to C and I'll worry about D when I get there. Right. So I hope that helps give a little insight, you know, of, of that resilience and that just getting past these moments that people get stuck at where, you know, God forbid, but you hear about the veterans, like all respect where suicide has happened, you know, like, and we need more things for them, by the way, but finding ways to respond to adversity is something that I think is a really sensitive but under talked about topic right like a lot of people don't get in conversation like we're having right now right it's just hey how are you i'm not really asking how you are and i don't really want a real answer because that would be abnormal we're just gonna bullshit ourselves that everything's freaking fine everything is awesome <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. hey good to see you bye bye you know and wash your feet yeah for me, I think of four quadrants, if you can stick with this analogy for a minute, like an, an artist ambition with an engineer's mindset, right? So there's this optimism, pessimism, right? And then there's realistic and delusional, right? So the things we want to be, right? We want to be optimistic. We want to have a good attitude. We also want to be realistic, right? We want to not be like living in a false reality. But there's a fine line when you get optimistic versus delusional, where you pretend that there's no flat tire going on, right? You're pretending that there's no circumstance. And then on the flip side, right, with realistic and um, pessimistic, I think some people mess those two up, right? They, they call it realistic, but then they become cynical and negative, right? So I think yeah. there's a fine line there to be realistic and optimistic at once. And that's kind of what we talk about, be, be great at what you're what good, good at. at yeah. Like, it's delusional to think you can be great at something that you're just naturally awful at, right? So like, be realistic by saying, hey, I've got, like, no one taught Shaquille O'Neal to be seven foot tall. Like, so it was not delusional for him to say, man, if I bust my ass, I could, I could play at the next level. I could become the big, like, he has all the tools that's where it is. It's being self-aware. Um, and I, you know, we could go on, you know, forever. And I, and I think there, there's certain guys, maybe it's everyone that comes on the show. Billy's like, no, you tell everyone that comes on the show, they need, they need to have their own show, but there are, there are certain people to, to win in anything, to get in really good shape, to win the content game. It's consistency. You, you put a quote, uh, when you sent me your list of, of, you know, your big quote guy, so am, so am I, but it was, uh, starting is important, but never, um, never ending is the most important. When it comes to working out, it's consistency. I know probably for the last 15, 20 years, I've averaged four or five days in the gym doing something, right? You, it's those little bricks over time. Then you're just kind of maintaining excellence for the rest of your life. Same thing with content. Yeah. And I, I think we could uh, want to have chase on more whether it's uh, definitely, definitely you know chase excellence whatever that we end up coming up with the um because people have probably noticed the uh, name of the channels change to yeah. small town big sound we did that purposefully because we want first of all there's a lot of 
movers and shakers. There you go. A lot of movers and shakers in small towns, the, but this town particularly, and we want it to be more of an umbrella term for people like Chase, for people who have a great message that maybe just need help with the delivery of that message. We happen to like doing both. We probably like the producing side more than anything. Oh, yeah. It's, it's so much fun producing. Plus, you know, Chase, I, by doing that, it kind of, like we talked about, get out of our comfort zone. Now it's not the Matt and Billy show. It's, you know, now we got to take care of Jordan. We're fully vetted, you know, and, and now we have to set up, a, you know, if we're going to do Chase Excellence or, you know, we're always growing, always achieving new uh, accomplishments, moving, pushing the needle or moving the needle making it better and then yeah it was kind of weird changing it from i'm not gonna lie from magician and jock to small town big sound but it was something that needed to be done yeah and chase like i don't know if you want to do a show or if you want to do like public speaking or motivation almost like, like if you want to like writing a column in a newspaper like just whatever whatever that looks like you've got i mean i mean last time we recorded even though audio didn't work i was like man there was we could have wrote a book from that interview because there was just so many different things to hit. And that's why I love doing a consistent content delivery because you can just like working out, like you don't do 10 sets of every single body part, every single day, right? You're hit today's arms. Yesterday was arms. Tomorrow's probably going to be arms yeah. for me, but um, no, I don't know if it's, it's some weekly, but I just know every time I talk with Chase, either through text or whatever. He's one of those guys that makes you want to run through a brick wall. I, like I legit want to run through our, yeah, our, we got our, our brick wall that yeah. you can't see right now. But, but yeah, would, would that be something you'd be, you'd be interested in doing? Absolutely. I appreciate the compliments, y'all. It's an honor to be chatting with you guys. I think a lot of both of you, you know, Matt, I've known you, Dodge, I've known you for years. Doge, as you say, right? Um, and, and Billy, it's just been a pleasure and an honor to chat with you guys. And I take that as a major compliment. You know, at the end of the day, you know, in the movie Gladiator, he says, what we do in this life echoes in eternity. Like, think about that. What we do in this life echoes in eternity. How many people are going to be at your grave one day saying, that person reminded me of my life? And like, let's get deep about it. Like, how many people are going to like say, you know, he never knew it, but that one thing he said kept me from becoming a drug addict. Like, you just never know. And it doesn't even have to be that extreme. Like, they made me get out of my comfort zone. He just said that one thing. And then I went and applied to that job that I was afraid to apply to, or that career that nobody thought I could actually do, but I was self-aware that I had some talent for that. So I'll share a story with you. When I was 12 years old, I got invited to one of my friend's house uh, down in Moorhead City, you know, different ethnicity, one of my black friends from sports and stuff, uh, single parent situation, living in poverty. And my mom and dad, you know, they finally let me go to his house for dinner. And, you know, they were excited to have this guest for dinner. And, you know, I didn't know what to expect. I'm 12 years old. I'm from this middle class family, a double parent, you know, good marriage. Um, and so I show up and they're so excited to have me. It's him and his mom. And, you know, they look at me and they're smiling. It was genuine. And his mom pulls out the dinner for us and we each got two fruit roll-ups that was the dinner and i'll never forget as this middle class white kid that i am at the time right like even at 12 years old it was like the holy spirit or whatever you believe in like it was a moment where it hit me so hard in my soul man i got it good you know when we live in such a entitled lifestyle like, think about it, even in healthy relationships, it's easy to become like entitled that they owe me another peanut butter and jelly sandwich, or they owe me this, or I don't have to appreciate anything. I'm deserving of this. Or do you know who my daddy is or my mama, right? Like, none of that, man. Like, the world owes you nothing to what you guys are saying. You know, I just want to plant seeds of light. There's a lot of darkness in this world, right? So, whether it's through humor, whether it's through being serious in a moment, like what we do in this life truly does echo in eternity. We all have a story to tell. We all have something that we bring to the table. It may not be always on a TV show, right? But find your calling, keep integrity to be an individual, no matter what your age is, choose what you magnify in your story and make sure that your testimony is leaving somebody else's life better. 
no matter what it looks like, I am interested in one day, you know, or along this testimony, I'm 37. So whether it's a TV show, whether it's a joining a podcast again, if I get the honor to chat with you guys again on fitness or life or philosophy or a combination of all the above, man, it's just a pleasure. And I hope that I do something that gives a light to somebody else at the end of the day, that makes my day better, you know, uh, of just making sure that whatever time God gives me on this earth, that I'm doing something to make somebody else's life, life better and that I'm having fun along the way. So thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I, th- I mean, I think it's a no brainer. I, I, I do too. Like, it's, I, I'm, I'm sitting there thinking of, you know, the one thing I get from Chase and, and from you, we always get something out of something. I know it sounds weird, but we always learn something from something. And that's, that's something to be admired about. I mean, we, like you said, with the fruit roll-up, Chase, it's like, okay, well, I, I've learned about myself that I am blessed and I'm thankful for that. And I think at 12, a lot of kids, I don't know. I don't know if I would even thought about that. I'd be like, Hell, can I get the grape one? Shit, my son Jackson would be like, what's wrong with that? <laughs> like, and, and that really, you know, like it, no matter if I'm the CEO of the biggest company one day, I'm multimillionaire. If that happens, if it doesn't, I'm going to be good either way. I've got things that money can't buy inside of me, you know, peace and joy. The, the, the enemy always tries to tell you, you can't claim peace and joy until things get better. No, no, no. You can claim your peace and joy right now in a storm. You deserve peace and joy right now in a storm, whoever that is listening right now in your heart. So that's what I'm about. And, you know, one quote I live by is be confident like you're the CEO, but humble like you're the janitor, right? Like have confidence, know who you are, gain self-awareness, be confident about who you are. You're, You're a unique individual that has a purpose and an assignment, but never get too big of britches that you think you're above anybody, above a job. I mean, literally be humble like a janitor you're you're whatever somebody needs right whatever whatever you can do to make somebody's day better right like take care of yourself but never get too big if you're the ceo of whatever or you're the big big shot make sure you still got your blue collar make sure you're not afraid to get your hands dirty and you're and my mentality is i'm never above anybody i might outwork you if we want to go toe to toe but i'm not above you and so I think a lot of people are getting back to entitlement. Entitlement is a disease. You know, we need to get back to gratitude, being thankful for what we have, for this opportunity of this, you know, jock, magician and jock show and, 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 and little town, big sound stuff. Like, I love this because what you guys are doing is putting out some positive vibes that this world needs. Like we've been through COVID, right? Like this one, one of my offices the other day said BC and I'm like, oh, before Christ, and they're like, no, before COVID, like, yeah. it's just interesting, right? So yeah. the world needs some positivity. It's a dark place, right? Yeah, and it, but it, it needs some truth too. You know, we're not, we're not, we're not rainbow pumping. We're not sunshine pumping. Like, um, that's something with you because you back up what you say. You're not, if I'm a hundred pounds overweight, you're not going to chase. Isn't going to come up and be like, dude, you're looking great. Like what, you know, he, he'll, he's going to sell it to you straight. And um, yeah, I think the world needs more of that really it just needs more authenticity. And I like I read a good quote, like uh, be yourself. Everyone else is taken. Right. And that's, that's your, in any type of deal, my biggest differentiating factor, we're all talking about that in business. Like what's your unique selling proposition? A lot of times it's you. And that's like, you're the, you, you, know the most about yourself, you know, your strengths, you know, your weaknesses, you know, whatever. So just lean into that stuff. And one thing I love about Chase and why I think he would be great doing a show like this, because he's always moving. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? There's people that are, they sit on the sidelines, they're waiting for you to tag them in. Or then there's those that are moving and they're like, hey, hey, we're, we're, the train's left the station. You can get on or get left, but it's going. And that's, I think it was the CEO of, um, was it Southwest Airlines said, yeah, we have a, we have a strategic plan. It's called doing things. And yeah. it's just nothing happens until somebody moves and Chase is moving. So I'm, I'm really excited to see where this goes. I know people are going to be begging for part two. For people that are listening now who are, um, maybe they run a business or they're a parent or whatever. And they're like, I don't know if I could create content. I say, look, you're creating content every single day. If you're a coach pouring into your kids, you're creating content. 
Chase, I know everyone he sees, he's creating content. The problem without doing it on something like this is that content ages like milk, right? That message ages like milk because next day they might remember 20% of what you said. And then a week later, they're like, what did he say? Would chase is somebody who needs to be on something that's evergreen. Oh, yeah. With technology now, it literally can echo in eternity, right? So, yeah, we're, we're excited, man. We appreciate you coming on. Yeah, man. Thank you guys so much for having me. And uh, let's keep let's keep the world moving in the right direction, right? In a real way, like you said, it's got to be authentic and it's got to have movement. You know, there's enough analysis paralysis out there, right? Where people just talk a good game. There's no action, you know. So I appreciate you guys, Billy. Dodge, you guys are awesome, man. And let's keep 252, you know, making some big sound out here as well. Represent. <laughs> Boom. So, yeah, but well, like I said, <laughs> I, you know, it, it's an honor to have met you and, and to, to get to know you now just through the, the two conversations and appreciate you doing this for us. So, with that being said, guys, do us a huge favor hit the subscribe button. Smash. What is it? The like button. <laughs> <laughs> guys leave us a comment down below we'll see you on the next video peace